Good evening. Welcome to a, an occasional special from Jarek's channel. Travel advice. <laughs> we earlier had the remarkable uh, recommendation of holidays in Gaza and hotels to go and see there. Obviously, this is a new niche type of holiday akin to extreme sports. <clears throat> I can't help but laugh at it. No laugh at the idea that because one hotel may or may not remain standing, it indicates that, you know, the situation is not drastic in Gaza. A hotel that it should be noted. Let's go and have a look at its wonderful TripAdvisor reports because they're hilarious. As you will see in a moment. Here's a top 10 best hotels in Gaza. There ain't too many of them either. Um, and none of them have very many reviews. As a regular trouser will know, that's always a kind of uh, danger sign, red flag. When you get places claiming to be five-star hotels, which have 15 reviews or 20 reviews, and have three and a half stars, it's a bit dodgy. But here's the Al Matashtal Hotel which was recommended as a wondrous place to travel and a five-star hotel. Bit hard to know, really, as the last review was in around April or so. Let's have a look at the reviews. The photos look nice, but then again, anyone can make a photo look nice by mucking about a bit. Here we have the reviews. 13 reviews, 3.5. That would... That would mm, give me a sort of red flag traveling anyway, especially as it's claiming to be a five-star hotel. We have six excellent, one very good, three average, one poor and two terrible. Not exactly a great sort of, sort of ratio so far. I'd say the two that are terrible and the one that's poor are likely to be the more accurate ones. And I've got a funny feeling that the six excellent ones, which sound a bit bland and a bit sort of as though they were written to order, were probably paid reviews or done to order and made to push up sort of some business for the place. There is no review, however, after April the 23. However, since people seem to think this is a wonderful form of tourism, I'm going to introduce you to a book that was written by the late P.J. O'Rourke, who was an American political columnist and satirist. It's called Holidays in Hell. P.J. wrote this in the 1980s. And here's his ramble through Lebanon. And I'm going to read part of it out, as P.J. thought, obviously enjoyed this sort of extreme tourism. A ramble through Lebanon, October 1984. I visited Lebanon in the fall of 1984, which turned out to be pretty much the last time an American could travel in that country, with only a risk, rather the certainty of being kidnapped. I was just taking a vacation. Summer had convinced Vanity Fair magazine to let me do a piece on the holiday pleasures of Beirut and its environs. What follows is with a few parenthetical addendia, the article I wrote for Vanity Fair, an article they wisely th decided was much too weird to publish. Passport, bispot, passport, pisspot. It's the one English word every Lebanese understands and no Lebanese can say. The first, deepest and most enduring impression from a visit to Lebanon is a endless series of faces with gun barrels poking through the car window and mispronouncing your travel documents. Some of these faces belong to the Lebanese army, some to the Christian Falange, some to angry Shiites, a blustering Druze, a grumpy Syrian draftees, a Scarsdale-looking Israeli reservist, and who knows what the rest they belong to. Every other gun has a checkpoint in Lebanon. Presumably, this is the, the new fashion for the people attempting to sell a narrative that it's all all right in Gaza and nothing's really happening there because we can find a picture of one luxury hotel that has had no reviews for six months and a, re a hotel that it should be noted that when you go off and do some minor research for all of about three and a half minutes, you'll find out was that something of a disaster getting built and was never completed properly, understaffed and had problems with supply issues. 
Funny how the person reporting on it didn't notice all those facts. But anyway, here's some more of PJ Rourke's wonderful tours around Lebanon in 1984. On the other hand, Lebanon is notably free of tour groups and Nikon-toting Japanese. One wonders why. The beaches, though shell-pocked and occasionally mined, are not crowded. Ruins of historical interest abound. I'm sure there'll be some of them in Gaza after the next week or two. We can, you can have a special extreme holiday sports. See if you can avoid the unexploded bomb. See if you can not fall down the uh, chasm left by bombs. See if you can avoid the loosened support column and concrete falling on your head, etc., etc. In fact, hotel rooms are plentiful. No reservation is necessary at even the most popular restaurant. Though it is advisable to ask around and find out if the place is likely to be bombed later. I'm sure this may become a feature of the extreme Gazian holiday. And what could be more unvarnished and authentic than a native culture armed to the teeth and bent on murder, pillage and rape? One thing minor travel to tra difficulty with travel to Lebanon is you can't. There's no such thing as a tourist visa. This may become a problem later as well. In any case, I'm sure we'll be seeing more of this wonderful. There's nothing really wrong with in Gaza stuff by someone finding this sort of stuff again and trying to sell this narrative as we go on. The fact that somebody can find one picture of one hotel or a building like that here and there and suggest that this seems to mean that the people in Gaza are living the life of Riley is absolutely soddingly hilarious. And anyone doing that or anyone believing it, well, words fail. It's plainly a propaganda piece of the simplest and most crude kind. But, of course, if people wish to believe it, please feel free to. The reality is, of course, on both sides, there's misery, terror and violence. But, of course, each side would like to tell you the story that they're the big good guys and nothing bad is happening from the other side. Instead, they're all living in five-star hotels and paddling about, apparently. Feel free to solve this stuff if you like. <laughs>